This vote is a vote as to whether Florida wants to regulate out of existence a safe technology with 80 years of data because it is held hostage by a vocal minority of people presenting baseless and unscientific claims. And perhaps the, the contrail lie that being the, the greatest deception ever perpetrated on populations around the globe. Regulatory scrutiny and misplaced environmental activism, the same kind that killed nuclear about a century ago, is at risk of killing cloud seeding now. My name is Augustus Dorico. I'm the founder and CEO of Rainmaker Technology Corporation. We're a next generation cloud seeding company that's using advanced weather resistant drones to fly into clouds to make it rain and snow more and then measure the anthropogenic precipitation we induce with next generation radar. Everybody that uses water stands to benefit from cloud seeding. If you need water, then cloud seeding is one of the most cost-effective ways to produce it. In California, for example, the state water supply strategy specifically accounts for half a million acres of farmland turning into desert by 2030 because there's not enough water to go around. And these are multi-generational farms that have been there for the better part of the last century that now are shutting down in mass throughout the Central Valley, throughout the Inland Empire. They need more water and cloud seeding is one way to supply more water to, at the very least, maintain the production that they've had in the past and eventually grow more farms and increase the amount of arable land in the U.S. The 20th century was full of aspiration, right? Like, we don't need to go into a whole, where's my flying car spiel? But now, in this moment, when we finally actually do have the means to make water abundant via cloud seeding, when we do have the means to deliver on the promise of cloud seeding from the 40s, regulatory scrutiny and misplaced environmental activism, the same kind that killed nuclear about a century ago, is at risk of killing cloud seeding now. And if that happens, it's not going to be that a hundred years go by before anybody deploys cloud seeding. It's going to be strictly the United States that doesn't have access to cloud seeding. It's not the first time that China has reportedly hacked the weather for a major event. And it was as if the weather was as perfectly choreographed as the event itself. China invests hundreds of millions of dollars per year and employs 38,000 people in their weather modification office. They're testing all new types of drones, all new types of materials, new types of radar out in the field to enhance precipitation for their agricultural interests, for their hydroelectric assets, for their manufacturing. And so if 31 states and the federal government were to ban cloud seeding, then China would control the weather rather than us. The talk of the country right now is what is cloud seeding, what is solar radiation management, are chemtrails real, what are contrails? The consequence of this conversation has been the proposition of bills in 31 states across the U.S. to ban any deliberate modification of the weather or the climate. Similar bans have been proposed in Kentucky, North Dakota, and Florida. A lot of the interest in this legislation has come about because there are people concerned about baseless conspiracies of the U.S. government emitting mind control substances or some sort of alien bacteria into the environment, and nobody has stood up to either appropriately debunk those or differentiate whatever claims these people may have of chemtrails from real technologies like cloud seeding. And what I've been doing is flying across the U.S. to different state capitals, mostly in the east, to differentiate between cloud seeding, solar radiation management, and chemtrail conspiracy theories. Augustus Dorico, CEO of Rainmaker. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Committee. This vote is a vote as to whether Florida wants to regulate out of existence a safe technology with 80 years of data that can benefit its farms, prevent wildfires, uh, and help the state overall. Uh, if this ain't chemtrail, that is finest. Perhaps the, the contrail lie that being the, the greatest deception ever perpetrated on populations around the globe. Because it is held hostage by a vocal minority of people presenting baseless and unscientific claims about streaks in the sky that they see, which they conflate with both clouds seeding and solar radiation modification. I went up in Tallahassee and gave my testimony. I was thanked by the committee, I sat down, and the person that followed me was a John Lennon impersonator. Thank you, Chair Robinson, Rep Steele, and members. If anybody can put on paper whatever these bloody maniacs are doing, I'd be very pleased to know, because I think they're all insane. Sir, can you- I'm liable to be put away. He's insane for, can, for sir, expressing that. Sir, That's what's sir, insane about it. Sir, can you keep your comments to the bill, please? Thank you, sir. Appreciate your testimony. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Peace, love, and sunny skies. After his testimony, 
I went to a coffee shop in Tallahassee just to collect my thoughts, clear my head, I'm looking at my phone, and like an apparition, like a vision of water in the desert, he appears in front of me and says, better luck next time, peace, love, and sunshine, kid, and then disappears off out of the coffee shop into the swamps of Tallahassee. Senator Ileana Garcia has legislation to ban geoengineering and weather modification in the state of Florida. I support the legislation. However, the Florida House of Representatives has gutted Senator Garcia's legislation, and they would actually codify the practice of geoengineering and weather modification. We have swayed the majority of state legislatures to either carve out cloud seeding, drop the bills altogether, or most interestingly in Montana, they proposed a bill to ban all weather modification and geoengineering. And after we met with them, after we met with cattlemen throughout the state, they not only carved out cloud seeding to approve of it in the state, but they appropriated a $1.3 million budget to stand up a cloud seeding program to make more water for all of their agricultural interests. We have been, since the dawn of industrial civilization, modifying the weather unintentionally. Every single coal plant emits steam and coal particulate into the air, which creates clouds and precipitation downwind. Whenever you build a city, the heat island that's created by that will affect local weather patterns. Modifying the weather unintentionally is something that I'm way more concerned about than intentionally with a clear regulatory framework and buy-in from local stakeholders. I strongly prefer the latter case over the former where goodness knows what's gonna happen to our weather without us taking care of it intentionally.